guess your first R and B record that made you more transition because you were, you were part of the Hitman, right? Right, right. I worked with Puffy as a Hitman, but I was mostly doing hip hop over there. I think the first record that I really did coming out of that camp on the R and B side was probably the Michael Jackson record. Okay, um, I did. Um, Heaven Can Wait. And um, that's when I got introduced to Teddy Riley and I was working closely with him, who was I was a big fan of and uh, such yeah, an iconic producer. Of and course. I learned so much working with him. But um, how how'd that happen? Like, how'd you how'd you team up? Um, we started working on the Heaven Can Wait record. And um, immediately we, after we had gotten it all together and I had worked with Teron Bill and Aritza Laws with writing it, I was like, this this feels like Lady in My Life. And I was like, I wanted to make a record because Michael at that time had just done, you know, the Heal the World and the Free mm -hmm. Willy type records, but he hadn't had like a love ballad in a long time where he was actually talking about an interaction, interaction with a woman. Right. And for me, I wanted to make a record that would be like a staple in, in uh, the black community as this is one of these records you put on when you're spending time with your lady or it, it uh, you know, it's the 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 quiet storm type record or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And so we tried to shop it to Kavon Edmonds. He wanted to do the record, couldn't pull the record off. Or oh, he said that we were making him sound like Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. We should just go get Michael Jackson. And mm -hmm. the light bulb went off, and I was like, "That's right." And so I just started playing Six Degrees of Separation, and a guy by the name of Kenny Quiller was working with Teddy Riley. He knew me. He was from North Carolina as well. And we gave him the record, and like three weeks later, Michael Jackson was like standing here in my face talking to me. That's so, crazy, man. So you know, you 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 grow up on Michael Jackson and the Jackson Five right. and the cartoon and right. him Thriller moment, and then all of a sudden, I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. I don't know yeah. anybody that knows Michael yeah. Jackson or ever met him, but he's talking to you, and so it's just a very surreal moment. Had you life. ever even considered doing a record for Michael Jackson prior to? I mean, you, I mean, you didn't have that song no. in mind. Him no, 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 no. I mean, I had him in mind when we created the record, but I never thought in a million years I could get, get I could get to him. I right. tried to get to Janet with the record at first, gotcha. but I never thought in a million years because you know it's Michael Jackson. It's Michael you don't, Jackson. you don't think. You yeah. can even ever meet him. But right. that whole experience gave me the confidence to realize that we're all human at the end of, of the course. day. We're all six degrees of separation That's to right. anybody. So I I practiced that afterwards and I I was able to work with so many other artists just by, you know, doing that and believing that I can get to anybody, you know. Somebody knows somebody that knows somebody. So what did, what did you learn from my, working with Michael Jackson? Uh, he's a, he's a very uh, much of a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. um, he spent like two hours warming up his vocals mm -hmm. before he even recorded one note wow. with his uh, vocal coach. I think he record he did a vocal warm up for like two hours and then sang for thirty minutes and then left. Wow! And then was like, you know, I'll be back tomorrow to finish the record. But just really paying attention to detail and the nuances of the demo, he was trying to recreate everything. Mm -hmm. And it was just, uh, just to see him in there singing, it was just like surreal. Yeah, right. Like even the takes that they didn't even keep on the record, just to see some of the stuff that he was doing vocally, you could tell like he was like really been developed, really seasoned as a vocalist Absolutely. and knew exactly what he wanted to do. I mean, Michael Jackson yeah. is that dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rest definitely. in peace, rest in power to yeah. the king of, king of pop. And, you know, he, he passed away today, too. So this is really like, uh, Yeah. To, the, man, the, the that, so that was, was, that's been seven years now? Uh, It's been longer than that. Like, Eight right? years? Eight, wow. nine years, I think. Oh, wow. Nine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. He, yeah. Man, that's crazy. Which is, which is crazy because I, uh, I had a dream about him passing away, like, two months before that and it was like I woke up and it was like this is a hoax this couldn't be true or whatever and right. of course he he wasn't gone then but then when he passed it just it just hit me again and I was just like I was like wow I was like I felt this feeling before it was kind of like a deja wow. vu moment when he passed so. man that, that the world stopped for, yeah, yeah. For, for most folks I'm for sure I talk about Michael Jackson being maybe the most famous name mm -hmm. since Jesus yeah 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 like you know, yeah, yeah. you think in history, you think about names of people. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of another person in history since yeah. Jesus no. uh, that everybody knows. Yeah, I mean, yeah. All around the world, you know, I mean, kids, kids that right. are born now, three, right. four years old, are still being influenced by yeah, Michael, Jackson. Knows Michael Jackson. And to say that you like that's we've we've touched on one legend mm -hmm. and Biggie. Mm -hmm. Now we're touching on the the biggest one of all mm -hmm. and Michael Jackson. So right. you. 
you've done more than just from that experience, being able to work with these two guys, more than most aspiring producers, musicians, whatever, to get, have an opportunity to get records with both of these guys. I mean, it, it kind of blows me away sometimes that I'm from this small town and I've worked with probably six of the biggest icons of that era. Sure. And, and popular music. And, you know, you're always just moving forward and always trying to create the next experience. So you rarely get a chance to think back in retrospect to the things that you've done in your career. And I mean, I appreciate this show because this gives me a moment to reflect on that. And sometimes this business is so, so tough to get through that sometimes sure. you need those moments that you actually get to reflect on it and appreciate what you've done right. and uh it gives you the confidence to keep going so coming from the michael jackson uh, so this there's three out there was a uh, uh, rock my world was on that album right mm -hmm. uh then butterflies right and then heaven can't wait right. was the third single yeah on that album. and i imagine if he would have actually did a video to that record Man. with his imagination Absolutely. what it what it would have been so Man. Uh, that but that's was, still a lot of people's favorite song yeah 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 um yeah. It, it took off and i see it on youtube I see a lot of people singing it. I see a lot of people talking about that record still to this day. So I can only imagine what would have happened had he followed through and not fallen out with Sony. Gotcha. Know. Look, I just got to know my producer text. Mm -hmm. It's been 14 years since Michael Jackson died. Wow. That, that went that quick, <laughs> Wow. Right? I remember it. feels like years, it's almost yesterday. Man, man years ago, I was yeah. in L.A. I want to say this was, I was promoting an album uh, back in 2014, matter of fact. Uh -huh. And uh, we were doing a radio tour. So uh -huh. we were up and down from San Francisco all the way down to uh, uh, St. Louis and Pispo okay. and uh, L.A. and Fresno, all that area. But we passed by, I believe it was uh, Santa Barbara, Santa Ooh. Maria, wherever. And that's yeah. where Neverland was. Right, right, right. So we pull up to Neverland Ranch. Uh -huh. And this is 2014. At, yeah. that, at that time, I'm yeah. sorry, it was five years at that time. I oh, remember okay. this. We pull up. And there are people, people from still still out there. People from Germany, yeah. people from London, yeah. people from mm -hmm. all over the world yeah. pulling up yeah. and they're writing notes wow. on the on the wow. uh, on the concrete, you know, in front of the in front of the gate. Well, I wrote crazy. a note and yeah. I sang Heal the World oh, wow. to the crowd. Nice. It, it may have been like fifteen people out there nice, at nice. that moment. But that's something that people and they, apparently they go out and they pressure yeah. wash the uh the the uh writing every day and then wow. every day. It's wow. graffitied again with, with notes and tributes to Michael Jackson. That's almost like some of the icons like uh, uh, Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix are over in Europe. Sure. And people are still putting flowers and memorials um, in front of their grave to this day. So, Just show you the yeah. power of music and yeah. the impact oh, definitely. that these people have on uh, on all of our lives from a soundtrack standpoint. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, and let me just say, like, just being in the room with him... You, there was like a vibe in the spirit in the room that you could feel like he was not of this world. Mm -hmm. Like it was just so different. And then when he talks to you, he's looking in your face and you feel his humility and his sincerity and his, and his conversation. Absolutely. And I was just like, it's just a really weird feeling like, yo, this guy is not really from here. Like he's definitely something very special. Absolutely. Man, yeah. shout out to Michael Jackson. Rest in power.